All right, so first I want to welcome everyone to the first Musicians Bootlick and Barbecue. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Hooray. Thank you. This is a show by musicians for musicians. We're all about Cleveland musicians. So um, we are also shooting for our YouTube channel called the Musicians Bootlick. So you can catch all the shows uh, on the Musicians Bootlick. We are also live on Periscope. Are you guys familiar with Periscope? I have no idea what that is. No, you don't know. You don't know what Periscope is. Is it a porn site? Because I would know what that is. <laughs> was, yes, I would have known sooner too. But uh, no, Periscope oh. is broadcast live around the world. People can check in anytime. They can ask us questions. They can send us messages. Um, so we are live on Periscope. It's an app through Twitter, and um, I want to send out a sincere thanks to you guys because you know you guys jumped into this thing blind. This is our first show. You guys didn't ask a lot of questions, and you just jumped in. So first, I want to thank you for that. All right? Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks uh, for having us. Yep. Appreciate it. And, um, I still so, have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so here we have the guys from Big in Japan. Uh, we have R. Scott Vaughn and Matt Contorno from Big in Japan. How about that, huh? Hey, that guy likes me. Yeah. yeah. How about him? Got up, man. <laughs> There's our fan. Oh, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, if you're joining us on Periscope, you can hang out. This is a people are joining. Very cool. They are. Um, Hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a Cleveland rock and roll show f uh, by musicians for musicians on a YouTube channel called Musicians Bootlick, and we're live around the world on Periscope. Hooray! Um, First thing I want to know is, I think it's unusual how long you guys have been together. Tell us about the band, when it started, how long you've been together, those kind of things. Want me to talk or I'll talk? We've been together since November of 2008. Okay. Same three guys. Uh, it's coming up on six years? Seven six years. years? Six years. Six seven years? years. Seven years? I think so. and, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> seven uh, years. But it's been a long time. We're probably the longest tenured same member in this band around Cleveland, I would imagine. I think so too, actually. No, there's. Well, there's some more. But now, with I the thought, original members, sure, Matt, sure. I thought you and I were talking at one point, and you said that uh, uh, there, there was some real history. Who have you been playing with? Your guitar player for a long time? Yeah, actually, uh, the guitar player that's in Big in Japan. We actually started our first band when well, he was 13, I was 12. Wow. Yeah. So you guys, uh, how many gigs you got under your belt? You think? As big in Japan? <laughs> At least three or four. Now, now, let me ask you, when you guys first started playing, what was it like? I mean, how old were you? How old were you when you first started the band? Gentlemen never asked to lay their age, sir. No, not, not you. How old were you guys when you, when you, you and you a guitar player got you know, together? It was probably you? maybe eight months after that. We did, uh, we did a talent show, and believe it or not, after that, we got picked up by a manager. And then we started opening up for Cleveland bands. How old were you at this point? Thirteen. Thirteen. So our parents <laughs> would have to shuffle us off to, to the gigs and, you know. In, in like a horse and carriage? I mean, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and I'm going to get to that, too, about how long we've been doing this. Um, so, so six years. Now, in, in, I'm going to ask you this question next. But first, in six years, have you seen a big change in what we do in the cover bands, in the music scene in Cleveland in the past six years? Yeah, to an extent. It seems to be, within the last couple of years, everybody's trending towards the tributes. Tribute to this, tribute to that, experience of this, experience of that. Where it's not just bands anymore. They always got to have a, a niche or a, yeah. a certain artist they've got to copy or a certain genre. But... It seems to be what fills the rooms a lot of times, so hmm. I don't blame them, you know? You know, and, and, and the young kids, where are the young kids that do what we do? I don't see any these days. There's some out there. Uh, actually, my daughter's in an original band out of Cleveland. They're doing really well. Thanks, Milk. And uh, there's some other, there's a couple young bands playing rock and roll. I play Musicians Night in Willoughby every other week. There's a couple of young bands that are coming up, and they're busting out Ozzy. They're busting out Van Halen. That's and, just and bizarre. Just, yeah. But it's so cool because whether it's uh, Guitar Hero or whatever that's bringing them in, yeah. somebody 
they're finding it somehow and they're wanting to play it. So that's I've I mean, definitely that's cool. seen that too. I mean, I I, I played with a uh, with a bass player in Las Vegas and he's ooh probably close to fifty. He's got a daughter who's a late teenager and like the first song she learned was like Ozzy and this kind of stuff Absolutely. which is a whole another animal from what what I've been seeing too is I, you know I don't see a lot of the young kids out coming to see what we do you know and and I and I feel like as we get older our crowds are dwindling and I'm wondering what the fuck are we going to do in a couple years oh we could swear <laughs> okay. I didn't even know I swear I guess I swore all right <laughs> I mean seriously our our you know, yeah. if you look, where are the where are the other cover bands or, or the bands that you know? There's a there's a thing to be said for cover bands. It gets you gets your chops tight, gets you out there, gets you learning some, you know, making some money. Um, there's just not a lot of guys doing it. It scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I mean, do, have you thought about it that in that in those terms, Matt? Have you really thought about it in that way? You know, I, I guess it depends on where you're playing too. You know, yeah. We, we get a lot of you know we get younger crowds. You know, it all depends on the bar. Oh, yeah. The bar. Where's your youngest crowd these days? Around the corner, probably. Yeah, Lakewood. You know, college kids and yeah, a lot of college Kent, kids. Yeah. Kent. Yeah. And, you know, and they're a later crowd too. Mm. Yeah. They don't get out till 11, 12 o'clock. I've seen that. I've been. I've noticed that before. Yeah. Um, the music scene in Cleveland, I, you know, is is changing. Let's see. The industry itself. Think about that. Think about since you were thirteen. How the music industry is. When your first band started, you know, all the electronic and all that kind of stuff, you know, you're almost, it, it used to be kind of taboo, but now you're, now you're kind of screwed if you don't do it. You right. guys tracked? Yeah. Yeah. You Not heavily. Just, yeah. I mean, there's other bands out there that track more than us. We put a lot of, like, you know, the little things. I mean, we don't do a lot of vocals and we don't do a lot of other guitars and things of that nature, but we have tracks. I mean, it saves us so much money. I mean, <laughs> that's it's, true. It's worth it. I mean, not hiring a keyboard player, another guitar player. Keyboard players around the world hate you right now. Oh, they and do. They've been hating us for a long time. You know what? I don't like most keyboard players either, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, do you like playing to tracks? It's restrictive to a point. I mean, there's many tr songs we don't have with tracks that we can do our own thing, but... The ones we do have tracks, there's no change in it. I mean, yeah, you got to play that song the way it's supposed to be, or yeah, that's usually with most cover music, anyways. You know, you, you're there to play the song. Yeah, you know, it's a good point. Uh, yeah, I do know a couple bands that you know, you know, rock it up. We rock some songs up Absolutely. too. Well, that's what um, we kind of really do. That's we'd like to change like, the dance type music and put a gu heavy guitar over it, or right. up the tempo, or change it a little bit where it's more of a rock feel. That's what we call ourselves a party rock band or whatever you want to call it. God forbid we call ourselves a party band, right, Matt? But, you know, that's kind of what we do. I mean, we change these really strict dance tunes and put a heavy guitar behind it and stuff. And it's kind of cool. That is cool. And, I mean, I've, I've found a good balance in, in using tracks and and leaving enough songs open where you can, you know, you can kind of vamp on things. Absolutely. You know? And I, I think that's I think good. you got to do that, you know? Um... So, you, you talked a little bit about what you, what you describe Big in Japan as. What, yeah. How do you describe Big in Japan? What are you guys? What kind of band? Well, like I said, we're kind of like just a dance, rock, pop, you know, pop hip hop, hip hop, rap, <laughs> oldies, new songs. We play everything that gets people dancing. That's all we care about. We want to get asses on the floor. Yeah. You know, that's what, you don't care that's when it about. came out. Just you know, as long as people are dancing. Get girls dancing and registers ringing. That's what you want to do That's in a cover it. band. You You're know? absolutely right. I mean, seriously, when you break it down, that is exactly what That's you need what to we do. Are, you know? Get people out, get butts in seats, get them selling drinks. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want them in seats. Yeah, we want right. them on the floor. That's true. <laughs> that's what we want. <laughs> um, so this drumming technique that you've acquired here over the time here, uh, Matt, I mean, for everybody who doesn't know, and we'll be taking some questions from Periscope here soon. I can tell they're backing up. But, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty crazy with your drumming. Where does that come from? You know, it's just, um, I like performance. Yeah. I've always kind of considered myself a performance drummer. Okay, um, that's interesting. I started when, you know, I could barely walk. Yeah. So I've been playing my whole life. Um, so, you know, I enjoy some theatricals yeah. in, the, in the performance. 
you know, it engages the crowd a little bit too. It definitely kinda, does. You know, they get a kick out of, you know, seeing some madman back there and you know, it's fun. You know, the band gets into it, it's it's a good time. So I mean I, you're like a live animal from the Muppets. But I can always tame myself down too. <laughs> I know, I know when to When is that gonna happen? <laughs> And you're very tame today. I've I seen am. you with, with, your, with your crazy outfits. You know, I think yeah. it's a real good mix. I think what you guys do is a real good mix. Thanks, man. You know? We have um, fun. That's what it's all about is just having fun, yeah. man. Entertaining the people and having fun. That's all it's about. Well, you know what? Let, let's take a minute and see. Do you have any questions on Periscope? Has anybody asked anything? There's one? the Oh. All right, so live from Periscope, they're wondering what your drum influences were, or are. Um, you know, a little bit of everything. I've never really pigeonholed my, my drumming style or who I listen to. You know, it can be jazz, metal, rock, pop. I mean, it's, it's trying to get as much exposure from as many drummers as possible, and then finding your own niche, and then developing your own style. Yeah. Um, you know, there's drummers that I can listen to that I can immediately tell within the first measure of what drummer that is. Yeah. And if you could develop a style and, and get to that point, you know, I, I think you're doing something good. So. Yeah, I, a drumming, it's, it's, uh, uh, that's a tough one, influence on drumming. I mean, there's been, you know, there's, there seems just to be a handful of really huge names out there in drumming. That guy from Foo Fighters is a badass. He's not bad. He's awesome. They opened up for us a couple of years ago. So oh, they did? They opened it. for you? Back in Japan. Okay. Yeah, it was... Yeah. That had to be a good gig. <laughs> um, okay, any other questions? Anything else? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, uh, so, let's see. The, our, the, the Republican National Convention is coming to Cleveland. Do you think it's going to get us any more, any more gigs? No. You don't? <laughs> no. Not even if Trump makes it here? Is he going to come to a gig? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be huge. Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> What's the best gig you guys have done? We've done a lot of cool gigs, man. We've done a lot of really cool things that I never thought we'd do. I mean, we played the Rock Hall. We played House of Blues. We played a lot of cool venues, man. We played stuff like look out overlooking lakes and giant festivals. You know, lots of people. Tell me about the Rock Hall. What was that about? Um, That's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in downtown Cleveland. Yes. Here. Uh, we got a call for a private party from a girl who comes to see the band all the time. And she, she pumped us to her bosses and said, hey, you got to get these guys to this party. They hired us. and That had to be pretty cool. It was yeah. really cool, man, because you know what? When you worship so many of these guys who are there, and you're getting ready to play, and you look over, and there's, you know... Alex Van Halen's drum kit, yeah, the CBGB thing hanging up. I mean, it's like, man, yeah, that we're, is. We're getting cool. paid to play here, yeah. underneath, you know, the car from U2 and big Gwen Stefani sign and stuff. I mean, it's pretty badass. Yeah, man. that's pretty it's awesome. Pretty badass. Uh, what, what, what's, what's, where do you want to play? If you could make a short little list of places you want to play, you got, any, you got anything on your targets? Locally. Uh, we pretty much play everywhere we want to play. I mean, That's we'd love to play everywhere, man. You know, as long as they pay us, I don't care. Give them a call. Play. They'll play anywhere. <laughs> We're whores, man. We'll play wherever you want us to play. Just pay us. But no, man, we, we like playing, you know, all the cool clubs. We play a lot of great clubs right now. we got a lot of great bar owners that like us, and they treat us really good, man. So... We're going to continue those relationships, hopefully build some more, and yeah. you know, keep it going, man, because we're having some fun. Of really good ones, too. So we do a lot of benefits throughout the year, um, you know, we'll, where there's several bands. And for me, I think that's definitely a fulfilling part Excellent. of the gig that we do. Because yeah. we do. I mean, we, we definitely give back throughout the year. Um, you know, just to help other people out, whether it's a group, individuals, a charity event. So to that's me, those, awesome. those are my coolest gigs throughout the year. Because wow. I know I'm giving back. What a yeah, philanthropist. I try to be. Yeah. <laughs> He's a hell of a guy, isn't he? <laughs> um, what, now, the, the Cleveland music scene, the Cleveland music community, these guys out here that are doing it every day like us, what, what's going on with everybody? What, 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 what are the good? <laughs> what, what is the bad? Song, what do you think about the Cleveland music scene? I think it's pretty good. 
Yeah. I, I like it a lot. You know, I've, I've met a ton of people throughout the years. I've actually developed a lot of friendships. Um, you know, we're, we're a group. We're it a is. We're a small but powerful group. You and know, there's a lot of us, though, believe it or not. There I mean, is. There is. And it really is a thriving community. I mean, I've traveled around, you know, quite a bit. And, there, you know, I never get the sense that, uh, uh, that there's as much going on in, in music as there is here. I mean, I've been to places that, that, that claim to be these great, you know, blues, you know, cities and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you walk up and down the streets and, man, there was not enough going on. Really? There was not enough going on. So kudos to Cleveland. But, Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and best of luck to you guys. Thanks, you man. know, I really appreciate you guys taking the time on our initial show here at Absolutely. the Bootleg. Absolutely, sir. Do we have some shots somewhere we, we, could, we could do? Shots. Um, hey, I want to thank everybody for uh, checking in on the Musician's Bootleg. This is going to be on our YouTube channel. And we're always going to be live every Wednesday night on Periscope. Right here from the historic Greenville Inn. Yeah. Cheer for the Greenville, yo. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Good night.